Uh, before we start, uh, let's have a quick word of prayer. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come before we, you now and we just thank you so much for the blessing of the Sabbath, O oh God. This is a day where you draw near to us and pour out your Spirit in an extra portion. Uh, so we claim that by faith, O oh God, and we receive your Spirit by faith and we thank you for that. We ask that you will guide us during this little devotional and the rest of this day. I ask that you will work through me and give me the words for the people today uh, that will impact all of us and help us all grow closer to you. We love you and thank you for all of your many blessings, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so how many of you were with us on our little hike yesterday where we learned about foraging? A few, a few of you? Jacob, I know you were there. Yep. Um, who, who enjoyed that? I, I thought it was awesome. Um, I don't know very much about foraging and all of that, so I learned a lot. Um, was there anything interesting that any of you learned and can remember? Any uh, natural remedies? Holly for chronic bronchitis. If you have chronic bronchitis, you can take the holly tree part of that and use that for that. The um, small, very small berries that you can eat, the red ones, and I tried one. Oh, yeah? And it didn't taste like anything, but um, he said it had vitamin C, so. Vitamin C, okay. Yeah. The partridge berries or bear berries, yeah. Right. You can take poison ivy and mix it with jewel weed, which is an antidote, and then they would actually use it for their skin Indians with. Oh, really? Jewel I'm weed and what? Jewel weed and, and poison ivy. Yeah. I wouldn't try it. Yeah, <laughs> pro probably not. Um, okay, interesting. So how did you guys learn that yesterday? How did you learn that? Did you just inherently have that knowledge? Well, we have a lot of jewel weed around where we are. Yeah, it was taught. You know, uh, jewel, weed, uh, jewel weed is also good for bees things. Okay, jewelry yeah. for bead stings as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's right. We learn these things. Yeah, awesome. So we learn these things by the teacher, the one who taught us on the trail. Uh, Cord, he was an awesome guy, uh, full of information. Um, and the only way we could have learned these things was by being near to him and listening to his words. Um, there's part of the group was up front. Jacob was up front with some of the other kids, and they learned a lot. Um, but during part of it, I was up front, but during part of it, I also got caught up in the back talking, and, and I missed a lot of cool things. Uh, and isn't that how our walk with Christ is? Um, we can only really learn what's good for us when we're near Christ. Uh, he is the one who knows what is good for us to put in and what is bad for us to put into our bodies. Uh, we need to be consuming things that give us life and health and all of these things. Uh, and we can only learn that by being near to Christ. Um, so, what is some food that Jesus recommends eating? Bread of life. That's right, the most important one. Uh, how can you discern between good and bad bread? Is all bread good? No. How can you discern between, if I have two loaves of bread here, uh, how, how would you discern? Well, the wider the bread, the sooner you're dead. The wider the bread, the sooner you're dead. That's good. I like that. I like that. The things that, what's one of the things are good and right and pure, that's the bread that we should think on. Amen. 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 I wish I had two loaves of bread up here. I wanted to do that for the youth thing uh, the other day, but I didn't have that available. I was going to have two loaves of bread, one of the cheap, like, dollar wonder breads, right and one homemade loaf of bread and you know you can go through and you can look at the ingredients that's one way you can tell what is good and what is bad what's in it what is it made out of what is the substance of these things and the same thing in our spiritual walk uh, we need to understand what we're partaking of because you know we don't only eat with our mouth we eat with our eyes by reading and watching we eat with our ears by listening um, all of these things, 
is what comes into our temple. The temple had five pillars, just like we have five senses. We need to be very careful what comes into our spiritual temple because by holding, we become changed. Um, but yeah, so two loaves of bread, you can look at the ingredients. Uh, another thing, have you ever seen anyone take a loaf of that really cheap bread and you can just take and go, yeah. just crush it up into a little ball? Uh, there's not much substance to it. It's not very firm. It's not very life-giving because they've taken, it's enriched. They take all the good out of it and just add a little bit back in there. Uh, but a good, firm loaf of bread that's homemade, that thing's firm. You can't crush it down to a little ball because there's actually substance to it. Um, but yes, Jesus compared himself to the bread of life. And in John chapter 6, if we want to turn there real quick. John chapter 6, starting in verse 53. We'll read a little bit about this. John chapter 6, starting in verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath set me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. And that is how we are complete in Christ. Just as Christ was complete in his Father, we are complete in Christ by abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in us. And But how do we do that? Practically, what does that mean? We need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. Amen. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we need to consume the word of God each and every day. Uh, we need to consume the bread of life so that uh, when we eat it, it becomes part of us. It builds us up and strengthens us. Um, but do you eat a whole loaf of bread in one sitting? No. It's, it's difficult. Uh, how do we eat a loaf of bread? What's the process? One slice, at a time. one slice at a time. We break it up into little pieces, right? Just like the Bible is already, it's pre-sliced for us into little pieces, little books and chapters. Um, and then you take it one bite at a time, one verse at a time, and then you chew it. You chew on that verse until you really understand it. And then that verse is to be assimilated into you, into your mind, into your subconsciousness. Just as when we went out hiking, I did not uh, assimilate all the information given during that hike. I got little bits and pieces here and there but I'd have to keep going back and hanging out with Cord and staying near him and allowing him to show me these things over and over until they become part of me, until I, it's, that knowledge is imparted to me. So yes, one slice at a time, one bite at a time, until it becomes part of you. That is how we're to do it with the Word of God. Um, but yes, and so with foraging, it was interesting, I was thinking yesterday, um, he didn't really point out much of the bad things, any of the poisonous things very much, I noticed. He pointed out mostly the good things. He showed what is good to eat uh, and the different benefits of different items. And it made me think of the fact that before I was in a deeper relationship with Christ, I spent a lot of time looking into conspiracy theories and the New World Order and what the Pope and the Jesuits are doing and all this, right? And it's it's handy to know some of that, but if I only know what plants are inedible, what plants are poisonous, <laughs> I'm going to starve, right? It's better to know what is good and holy and just and pure than what is evil and corrupt and wicked. If, like we said, if you only know what is wrong and bad, then you will starve. A big teller when they're studying, they'll study hmm. a real banknote to know anything different from that is counterfeit. Right. Absolutely. And that's how we need to be doing it with our walk with Christ. We need to just be so focused on Christ and what he's doing, all else will fade into the darkness. Um, what's the verse? It says, be simple in that which is evil, but wise in that is what is good. Um, 
Yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but that's the idea. So did anyone else think of any other interesting object lessons you can think of, spiritual lessons we learned on that hike off the top of your heads? Not quite. Mine wasn't really thinking on that, huh? That's okay. Um, well, it provides for us. We go out hmm. in the woods and we think we're going to starve, but there's nothing there. But there's, just like angels, you camp with around us. They're everywhere. Absolutely. The things that he has for us are everything. Where hmm. he provides, he has his blessing for us if we'll just recognize it. Absolutely. That's the thing. Uh, for any disease or problem that exists, God has already provided the remedy. Uh, we're just ignorant sometimes to the promises of God in His Word, uh, which is a solution to our spiritual sickness. Uh, amen. Um, also, <clears throat> the guide, he goes in front of us, leading mm. us where to go. Mm. Also, um, Christ goes in front of us, leading us where to go. And you, you don't want to go um, before him because you don't know where to go and you mm. will get lost. Too. Yeah. Also in our lives, if we um, uh, go before God and do our own will, mm. walk in our own ways, we will be lost. Absolutely. Yeah, we have to follow the Lamb whithersoever He goes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a shepherd also that goes before us and prepares the table before us mm -hmm. in the presence of our enemies. That's, I love studying that stuff too, the shepherd and how preparing the table would be typically the, the land, uh, the, like a mesa, where the sheep would go out and it would go out and get the poisonous things out of there, or make sure no snakes are going to come and attack the sheep. Uh, so yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so yeah, I think the idea I'm trying to convey is just like we learned with foraging, we need to discern what is good to consume uh, spiritually and what is bad to consume spiritually. But focus on the good. And like our sister back there mentioned, Philippians 4.8 is the ulti a great test uh, to see. There's different tests you can also do with uh, different plants if you want to try to find if it's edible or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you, it's a whole process. I wish I understood it. The whole thing. It's like you smell it. If it smells a certain way, it's probably not good to eat. Uh, another one is you, you wear it like under your watch, and if it causes a rash, probably not good to eat. Uh, if you touch it on your tongue and it has a certain taste, probably not good to eat, right? Um, and it reminds me of Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So this is the standard on how we need to test our spiritual food. Is the spiritual food, are the things we're consuming this life, are the things we're watching, listening to, reading, are they true? Are they honest? Are they just, pure, lovely? Are they have good report? Do they have any virtue in it? Um, so you see, he's focusing on the good. And if these things are devoid of the good, then it's probably best to leave them be. Um, so I pray that this was a blessing to you all. Um, and are you taking back over now? Or? I'm just going to take your mic off before you walk. Okay, wonderful. Uh, let's say a quick word, and we'll do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this blessed Sabbath. Uh, we thank you so much for being our great physician who goes before us and shows us all the precious promises in your word, and you show us how to discern what is good for us and what is bad. Uh, we have no wisdom and understanding of our own, for you are made wisdom unto us. You have made your son wisdom unto us. We thank you so much for that, O oh God. We ask that as we go forth this day and every day we will consider uh, what things are of good report, what things are virtuous. We ask that you'll give us this discernment to understand what to put in and uh, what not to, O oh Lord, because we desire to grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. We can't do that without partaking of you, of your word and your flesh and your blood, which is your life, O oh God. So we ask that you will impart your life unto us and that we will receive it and we won't fight against it, O oh God. We thank you again for all, your, for all of your many blessings, and we ask that you will bless this time today. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.